So this is Jolie here, four seconds out. We missed the yarn, must have forgot. I'm not even going to intro you. If you don't know who this is, you yourself must have forgot. Listen, it's a pleasure to have you on Seconds Out. I know you've been doing a lot of the rounds over here in the British uh, video channels on YouTube. Uh, how are you, man? I'm doing well. Doing very well. Very good to meet you. Uh, here, obviously, for the photo day for Chris Eubank Jr.'s fight at Wembley. Um, at, at was, as we look on now, Wembley Arena. Big fight for him on Saturday. Yes, big fight for him. Uh, opponent changed the last minute, but nothing that we're not used to. It's something that he has to be able to adapt to, so I think we're fine with that. And I'm uh, just looking forward to a good night for him. When did you find out about this opponent change? Today. Oh, you found out today? We found out, I found out who the opponent was today. We knew there was a problem a couple of days back, but uh, we found out the new opponent today. Both opponents are German. Um, both opponents are kind of a, a stepping stone, I think it's fair to say, Finn, would you agree? I would say that, but they both dangerous, especially the Kazakh guy, because the Kazakhstan guys have really good boxing skills. So you have to bring your A game with them because they're known for having good boxing skills. I mean, you got to remember, at the Olympics in 88, I won the Val Barker Cup, which was the best boxer at the Olympics for. I mean, that don't happen often, but every country uses it every now and then. Kazakhstan has about three of them now since that time. So that's telling you that they have great boxing IQ coming out of Kazakhstan. So I never try to underestimate nobody. I feel like Chris is a smarter, better opponent, more experienced opponent uh, of the two guys. But uh, you still don't underestimate nobody. Just quickly on the Olympics, as uh, soon as you know, it's very rare that we get to speak to you here. Do you still think about your journey at the Olympics and how frustrating that would have been? No, I don't think about it. I mean, it's there. We know what it is, and that's what it is. But it is a frustrating situation, which is why I try to join AIBA now. And uh, hopefully we can help change some of those things uh, because it's still happening in amateur boxing. It happens in pro boxing too, but at least in pro boxing, you're getting paid, you're getting compensated for it sometimes. Uh, in amateur boxing, it's like that's all you got is the fact whether you win or whether you lose. Mm -hmm. And when they rob you and you win, what else you got? You ain't like you got paid. So what do you have? You have nothing. They take everything from you. And that's not fair. Would you have thought at the time of your fight that, you know, in 2021, things would be different? Because it doesn't seem an awful lot has changed. It hasn't. No, awful lot hasn't changed. And uh, it's still, you still got bad decisions going on, nothing people doing about it. And it hasn't changed. But uh, hopefully with Aiba, I can get involved. And what I re would really like to do is pull Aiba and the IOC back together. Let's get a board, a committee start paying closer attention to these decisions. We have to give it to the real winner. We can't let it be political anymore. The real winner has to win. The real loser has to lose. If there's a close fight, then we got to figure out how we do that too because maybe we have to start fighting the extra round or maybe we have to start doing um, a bold fighters advance situation. You know what I'm saying? Bold fighters against somebody else. Maybe we have to make changes, but we're in 2021 where we can make changes. We can make proper changes to make it a better sport, to make the outcomes better. So I think we should look at doing it that way. Yeah, I think with legends like yourself involved in that type of stuff, it can only it can only help. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about uh, is, of course, the weekend's action. Anthony Joshua, Alexander Usyk. Alexander Usyk is the new heavyweight champion with three of the belts. Uh, what did you make of that? Because a lot of people are, are really quick to jump on AJ, but it was a tremendous performance from Usyk. Yeah, it was a tremendous performance from Usyk, but it also was a tremendous performance from AJ. Just that AJ didn't start his performance quick enough. He let him have the first round, which you can't do. You can't give a guy the first round who's coming up in weight. So that's what it is. Why do you think that about the first round? Because the guy coming up in weight, it's like he's coming into new territory, oh, and you can't let him come to new territory and take over. You got to let him know that, hey, uh -uh, what you did down there is not happening here. In other, in, instead, he came up in the same thing he did down there, he did up here. So he feel like he's fine, and that's how he won the fight. Because obviously, a lot of boxing is about mentality. So after the first round, after the first round, um, yeah, if you give away the first round, because the boxing's about mental. And it's not really about the first round if you're in the same weight class. But if you're coming from cruiserweight to heavyweight, I got to introduce you to this. I don't care that you beat them other heavyweights. They're not me. They're not the heavyweight champ. The heavyweight champ got to say something different in that first round. Look, you're in here with the heavyweight champ. Mm -hmm. This is how things are going to go tonight. And you may as well get used to it. If you don't do that, you're going to have a problem. 
he didn't do that, he had a problem. I said all along, if the fight go past five rounds, it's going to be very tough for AJ to win. And I said that because of the experience factor of Alexander Usyk. Do you feel as if AJ was wrong to try and go the distance? No, he wasn't wrong to try to go the distance. He was wrong the way he started the fight. Very interesting. Okay, so do you think an immediate rematch is the right thing? For AJ, if he really wants to get it back, yes, because the longer Usyk has the title, the more difficult he's going to become to beat. So, yes. Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury 3 is not long away now. Um, do you think we're going to see an upset in that Deontay Wilder retaining those belts? The belt, sorry, WBC? I can't really say which way would be an upset. I really can't. <laughs> because if, if, if Fury wins, that's going to be an upset. If Wilder wins, that's going to be an upset. So either way, it's going to be an upset. I mean, I can't really say which one will be the upset. So whoever wins will determine what the next fight is. So if Wilder wins, then of course we want to see Wilder Usyk. But if Fury wins, we don't want to see Fury Usyk. Mm -hmm. We want to see Fury maybe against Joshua. And if Wilder loses, let's put Wilder against maybe Usyk. Or if Dylan White wins next week, let's put Usyk against maybe Dylan White. Mm -hmm. But don't put Usyk and Fury together. It's too much of a chess match. And boxing right now don't need that kind of chess match in the heavyweight division. We don't mind seeing it in a lightweight division because most of these lightweight guys are known for punching power too. But Usyk is not known for his punching power. Fury is not really known for his punching power. These are two technical guys who don't possess a lot of punching power. So it's gonna be very difficult for either one to knock the other out because they're both too smart. Now in most cases, the, te the skilled big guy beats the skilled little guy. May not happen this time, but still, we're not gonna get rid of a knockout, which is what heavyweight boxing is kind of about, or and this is a very good fight because it's a boxer and a puncher like we saw last Saturday night. Saturday night we saw a classic boxer versus a classic boxer puncher. The boxer won because the puncher couldn't really land his punching shots. But that always makes for an intriguing matchup. The classic boxer versus the classic boxer, when neither are known for their punching power, not really good for TV. What do you think is the best matchup out of all the current heavyweights in this division? Um, I, no one asked for my opinion, but I think Dillian White versus Deontay Wilder. What about you? Yeah, that's, that's the most interesting one because that's two knockout punchers who will get there first. So, like, like I said, if, if, if Deontay Wilder loses, he should fight either Usyk or Dillian White because Deontay is a puncher, so his style is going to be interesting with anybody. Dillian White is a puncher. His style is going to be interesting with anybody. But both guys have shown that they can knock out, and both guys have shown that they can be knocked out. That's always interesting for us because we know they're not going there to go 12 rounds. They're going there to get a knockout. And if you remember in this fight Saturday, I predicted early on one of the shows, I said that the fight will go the distance. And I kept saying that if it goes past five, it's going to be very difficult for, for Joshua to win. Well, if I'm telling you it's going to go the distance, but I'm telling you if it goes past five, it's going to be difficult for him to win. What am I telling you? It should be a distant fight. Unless he went by knockout, it's going to be hard for him to win. I watched the, the pre-fight build-up last topic. Um, you were with Ade Ak Barak, and you were kind of talking about the, the comeback fights, and you were talking about Vitor Belfort. Could you kind of run through what you were talking about with him? David just asked me if I came back, who would I fight? I was like, he would be good because he just did it at the Holyfield, so he would be a good fight to have. Um, nothing against the guy. He's, you know, he's a good guy. I spoke to him a few times, but that would be an interesting fight just because of what he did at Holyfield. People would want to see that now, you know. Um, truly, the best fight out there probably is Anderson Silva. As in yourself? Yeah, Anderson Silva for me. Uh, but Vito wouldn't be bad because, like I said, because of what he just did at Holyfield, people would want to see a redemption situation or see can you get redemption for it, you know. So that's always a great story. Um, other than that, I mean, it's not really a lot. There are a few, you know, guys out there that could make good nights, a uh, few guys that could go out and we could really, you know, put on a good show. And that's all we're really interested in doing at this age, you know, and at this time. But however the ball bounces, how it bounces. Nice doing business with you. That's my fighter. I got to go. Respect, man.